Welcome to How Hard Could It Be, where I make a YouTube video then talk about some of my challenges in the process. On my quest to cover some Star Wars stuff, I stumbled into a question. What the hell is up with this stompy hover tank? Would it actually do what we see it do in the show? Could I find out how much force it might create? Well, there is only one answer to that question. Math. Complicated math. We will need to fill in the gaps of force equals mass times acceleration. Alright, we all have to begin somewhere, so let's start with the basics. Length, width, depth, etc. This tank right here? It's about to get all kinds of mathed up. Do you know what's coming first? That's right, a Wikipedia dive where it says it is 55 meters tall and floats 30 meters off the ground. And from the size of this damn thing in the cartoon, I call... So let's make up our own measurements instead, because what's easy isn't always what's fun. So we're going to snap up this little segment right here and use one line of pixels for our ruler. The height of a clone trooper is 1.83 meters, so that's what the ruler will measure. Let's copy paste this upwards and we get 40 replications until we hit the bottom of the metal smashy bit. That means it extends downwards at least 73.2 meters. That 73.2 meter gap will allow it to hover over a Douglas fir with only 3 feet of scraping along the bottom of the hammer. Fun, right? Going to the bottom of the tank itself, we get 80.52 meters. Cool. So we have a minimum height of 80 and a half meters. Now we just have to do the same for the length and width. We see from this one shot that it's a circle, so we only have one measurement, the diameter. So let's just take this and rotate it 90 degrees, add a few more and we have 76 replications. Doing the math, we have a diameter of 139.08 meters. Divide that by half for the radius and we get 69 nice .54 meters. Okay, so now we need to make some pi and multiply it by the radius squared for 15,192 meters. Multiply by the minimum height and we get a volume of 1,223,259.84 meters. Hooray for simple geometry! <laughs> now for the mass. For that, we need to discuss the material it's made out of. Now, we could use so many different types of metals and I always and spend hours discussing pros, cons, etc. for what's in it. I'm going to keep it simple though. It's metal, for one thing. Maybe it's magnetic and it's fired downwards like a Gauss rifle. It doesn't appear to have a lot of rust, so stainless steel, density of stainless steel, 8,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Do some multiplication and we get another big number. Huzzah! 9,786,078,729 kilograms of mass. And that's for the minimum height of this massive weapon. All you need to manufacture such a massive hammer is mine out and refine a significantly sized asteroid. Lucky for us, there's 39 in our own asteroid field that can gain us the material necessary, depending on their composition and internal densities. That's a little over 21 Burj Khalifas, by the way, the tallest skyscraper on the Earth. Almost 22 of them. Alternatively, you could drop the Great Pyramid of Giza, along with about a little more than half of a second one, just for, you know, good measure. Okay, onto the acceleration part of mass times acceleration. How fast did this massive column of metal move? Well, it drops in less than a second. Using frame data, we can get pretty exact. It drops to the first position in one frame, holds for a frame, likely because they're animating in twos. I think that's how that works. Then drops in the next frame the rest of the way down. The first time it drops down by 16.47 meters, giving an initial velocity of 16.47 meters per millisecond. Multiplying by 60 to get seconds, we get 988.2 meters per second. The remaining 56.73 meters is cleared in 3,403.8 meters per second. With two velocities and a time span for each, we will have to calculate acceleration, change in velocity over change in time. So final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the time span of 0 0.03 repeating seconds gives us, drum roll, and never mind, stop that, it sounds horrible, 72,468 meters per second per second. Now we do something really simple. We multiply the mass times our newly calculated acceleration and we get a huge frickin' number. <laughs> Whoo! Seven hundred and nine trillion one hundred and seventy seven billion five hundred and fifty two million six hundred and eighty thousand and nine hundred and sixty newtons. It's basically useless without some frame of reference to help understand it, so let's throw some stuff around, eh? You know that big old space shuttle we humans tend to shoot around into space? 
If we were to take 11.8 million of them at their top acceleration of 29.30 meters per second squared, you'd be close to the amount of force this tank is throwing around in a single blow. If you were to take the International Space Station currently falling around the Earth at 7.66 kilometers per second, weighing in at a little under 420,000 kilograms and increase its velocity by just 1 kilometer per second over a second, you'd only need to copy it 1.7 million times to reach the same amount of force. Keep in mind, we're only talking about the minimum requirements here. There may be more of the shaft still within the seismic tank. In fact, there probably is. If we use the Wikipedia measurements as a guide for ratio between the height of the tank and how high it hovers off of the ground, maybe get a little creative with numbers. I'll chop off, say, 5 meters for the ratio to account for internal structures at the top of the tank. This gives us a ratio of 1.6 between what is in the tank at minimum draw and what can be outside of the tank at full push. Multiplying that by 80.52 gives 134.2 total length of the iron pillar. Doing the rest of the calculations as described below. 134.2 for the height times 15192 for the area times the density of 8000 equals 2,038,766.4 times the acceleration equals a force of 1 quadrillion, 181 trillion, 962 billion, 587 million, 801 thousand, and 600 newtons. Oh boy, the number just got even bigger. Aren't you guys happy? I know I am. Okay, let's go back to our previous comparisons. Shooting space shuttles? Just need a little under the rounded up number of 20 million to reach the same amount of force. 19,667.380 shooting space shuttles during their point of maximum acceleration. Pushing the space shuttle 1 km per second? Gotta have 2.8 million of those bad boys to hit the same amount of force. I've got a bad feeling about this. If you imparted this much force on Deimos, the smaller of the two moons of Mars, you could get it to briefly move 0.8 meters per second squared, which is kind of neat. Give Halley's Comet a lovely boop with this monster and you're up to 5.4 meters per second per second squared on top of how fast it's already moving. I think you could even knock it out of orbit around the sun, but I'm not 100% sure on how all that works. I don't know what the point I'm trying to make here is. I'm just having fun with the numbers, and they got away from me pretty hard. Listen, don't take any of this seriously. Check my math if you want, debunk it all you like. I'm definitely doing something wrong here with all of this, and I'm just having a bit of fun. This weapon is ridiculous. I have no idea how to relate it to anything in the real world, and I just wanted to play with some science and physics stuff because I thought it would be entertaining. At least for myself. I have no idea how it would actually affect the planet. It would definitely leave a crater though, at least a small one. I wonder if the air pressure alone from the massive moving object hurtling towards the ground would throw you to the ground all by itself before you were inevitably smooshed. I don't yet know enough to say more about it, but hey, let's talk about how hard all of this was to put together. I spent quite a lot of time trying to research all of this, finding accurate numbers and formulas, that kind of thing. While I could have taken the Wikipedia entry's word for the statistics on the tank, I didn't want to. I wanted to really dive into how a lot of YouTubers, especially folks like Austin do it, as well as Game of Thrones episodes that played out like this. It wasn't easy. Making my ruler, trying to parse through all of the math, relearning all the formulas, etc, etc. I think I wound up having at least two pages of Google Chrome up, each with a dozen tabs. I also have a fully separate notepad full of all of my calculations and methodology, which I use to frame my script around, as well as to help document my challenges. I tried messing around with some asteroid impactor websites, but they weren't really designed to accommodate what I was trying to do, which is fair. I would have used them, but I didn't think they'd added too much to the discussion, especially because a lot of the information they offered would be inaccurate and incomplete. The other problem I had was trying to relay this information into something that makes sense. First, I don't really use metric in the first place very much. On top of that though, I don't know what a dang Newton feels like. I have no frame of reference for that. I don't know what a kilonewton feels like either. Multiply those numbers by a couple million to a couple trillion, quadrillion, whatever is just... Ooh boy. How do you even make that make sense? You can't break it down very easily. Trying to equivalent the raw data into something I could understand required more math, but easier math 
since the things I try to use already have masses calculated for them, as well as their velocities, and in the case of the space shuttle, even has a full trajectory list of accelerations, which is pretty cool. Thanks, NASA. And again, I'll say don't take any of this too seriously. I'm applying real world physics to a space opera, and on top of that, a highly stylized cartoon. As for the video itself, I had a few fumbles during recording. Part of that was due to the math and scripting process. Some of it was my own mouth. Either way, instead of trying to salvage my audio, I actually did some re-recording this time. Maybe you'll be able to tell. My usual pattern is to write my script, voice my audio, do the editing, salvage what I can during that process, then start with the video process. I actually avoid trying to go back and re-record things, which probably hampers what people hear sometimes. So, I'm trying to get better at all of that. I'm also looking at about 6 video channels for creating this. The first major part I worked on was that thing with a pie turning into pie, and yeah, I like how that turned out. Gonna admit, my fast speaking pace for this video thing maybe hampers my video creation a little. Maybe I should slow it down a little, maybe a lot, maybe not. Overall, I've had fun trying to throw numbers and words on the screen in entertaining ways. Finally, I just wanted to say I hit my first notable milestone, the one I was reaching for, 100 subscribers. In fact, last I checked I'm at 101, so I haven't just reached it, I've surpassed it. That means I'm on the right track and... It's working! It's working! It makes me truly happy that I've gotten this far. With all of that out of the way, ignite your lightsaber, lose it in a tank, manufactured sandstorm, punch some droids, target their weak points, find your lightsaber, and make a tank explode with only a laser sword. 